Hello and welcome to the build up here in Balls Ali in partnership with Ladbrokes where we look ahead to the biggest events of the sporting weekend. Now one of the bigger events this week is another uh, massive boxing uh, world heavyweight title fight between uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder and I'm delighted to say to preview that fight is none other than Ladbrokes ambassador, regular guest of the show, Jason Quigley. But Jason, we've got a bit more to talk about than uh, just uh, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury this week because as you know as as was predicted as was hoped for and and alluded to you by you um a, a few weeks ago and i think you said watch this space when we talked before the aj Usyk <laughs> fight uh world title fight november 19th you against the um demetrius andre that is some pretty exciting news yeah without a doubt you know it's uh it's really exciting for myself and my team around me we have uh we've known about this fight for a while now um but until my until my name signed on that contract, I don't really want to let anything out because in this boxing game, everything's changing all the time. But you know, we're delighted now that we have the we have the contract signed, the announcements made, the dates set in stone, and um, yeah, tickets go on sale to this evening. So we're uh, we're looking forward to the place to be filled with Irish. That's a fact. Yeah, there you go. So if you if you fancy the trip over. November 19th, uh, tonight's tonight to start looking at tickets for the fight. Um, Jason, this has been a while coming, you know, we talked we talked about fights that have fallen through in the past and, you know, there was like, it was a tough enough period during, during COVID, especially for yourself, there was, you know, a lot of kind of false starts, I would say. You got back in the ring recently against Shane Mosley, good performance, won the North American belt. The first time I ever spoke to you, you said, you were coming off the back of your defeat and you were like, I will be world champion. I will be world champion. This is what you've been building to since you turned pro, probably long since before you turned pro. When you got word that this is happening, what goes through your head? What sort of um, what sort of feelings do you have around a fight like this when, when you when it when you sense the opportunity is coming? It's um, of course it's very exciting because it's something that you have trained for all your life, like and then whenever whenever you sign that professional contract, you know, like at the end of the day, the main aim and the main goal by the whole team is to fight and one for one award title. So the evening that it was actually kind of in the middle of the night, maybe 1am, 2am, whenever I signed the contract, because we were getting everything sent over from LA. And uh, the next day then it was kind of like a, you know, a bit of a dream or something because you were doing it all through the middle of the night. You went straight to sleep and then you woke up. And I was back home then in Donegal for, for two or three nights. And I just went for a walk in around the town in the evening time. And uh, it was strange. It, it was such a strange feeling because I was just walking through the town like as if everything's just normal and it's just yeah. another day, day in the life. But kind of had to keep telling myself, Geez, we're going to be fighting for this world title. Like it's signed, seed, and it's delivered now. And you mm. know, it was uh, it was a strange feeling, definitely. Like because, as it says, look, this is something that you work towards all all your career, and you always look at it as that's always down the line. You know, that's going to come down the line. Whereas that down the line's here now, and it's happening. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting times. I was watching Andre. I've seen a couple of his fights, but I watched his kind of greatest hits on YouTube. And look, he's now he's world champion for a reason. He's a he's a very very good fighter. There was some sense that there's a sense that kind of the the big middleweights, the big champions, are in some ways avoiding him, and he's not the the fight that that fighters want. How do you see that as somebody who's about to get in the ring with him? Is this something you see it as? You know, I'm sure you've analysed them already, and you know you. I know how confident you are in yourself, but is it in any way a concern that it's like this guy can't get um, some of these fighters to get in the ring with him? You know, is it because he's the fighter people are trying to avoid in the division? Yeah, you know, uh, Andrade, he's, he's an unbelievable champion. Like, he's a great, great fighter. And he's had an unbelievable amateur career as well. You know, mm. he's uh, been a former world champion as an amateur. He's a two weight world champion as a professional and he's got that style that um you know can be very tricky and awkward for a lot of fighters especially the likes of a canelo and a golovkin you know they like to come forward they like to put the pressure on 
whereas Andrade is a very smart technical boxer and uh, used the ring very well. Wouldn't be in many fan-friendly fights and, and tear-ups because he is a boxer and, and he likes mm. to move. So, you know, I think a lot of the fighters out there, the top middleweights, the likes of Canelo and Golovkin, are avoiding him because, you know, they're using that excuse that he's not a fan-friendly fighting style and different things. But deep down, I think, you know, they're really... Um, they're threatened by his uh, his style and his technique. And, you know, I, I genuinely believe that if I was Andrade, I would be very disappointed that he hasn't got a crack at any of those big names yet because he is a two-weight world champion. He is the, uh, the reigning middleweight WBO world champion. So, you know, he definitely, I think, deserves a crack at those lads. But he hasn't got any of those shots or any of those opportunities um, I have the opportunity now of stepping in there and whatever chance he did have was having that world title and having the status of being a world champion mm. to get in those fights. Whereas after this fight, after this fight now between me and him, I think um, all those big fights are definitely going to be away from him because I plan on taking that world title off him. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. I saw some <laughs> of the reaction. Uh, like It's it's a kind of an awkward one, but like, some of the boxing fans reaction americans you know you would imagine that probably haven't seen too much of you in the ring or you know don't know your story too well but there's a sort of a sense of oh you know he's avoided another fight or whatever does that make you pissed off or does it if you've seen any of it or is it something that you're like great i'm happy to be under the radar here i'm happy to kind of come in shock the world and walk out of there with a world title on november 19th like all my professional career, I have been a favourite. You know, it's it's yeah. always been a matter of when's Jason Quigley going to be world champion. As soon as I turned professional, it was when's he fighting for the world title and when's he going to be world champion. So I've always had that type of pressure on me. Um, whereas this fight, you know, a lot of people are saying I'm a big underdog in this fight. Andrade's going to, you know, they're expecting him to win, win this fight easy and that's great for me like i know my capability my team know my capability and you know i know the desire and the hunger and the heart that i have to mm. become a world champion and let them all let them all write me off let them all put me down and let them all say what they want to say years ago that might have affected me you know mm. i've been thinking too much on what people saying and all this but you know i've matured a lot over the last couple of years and you know, I'm, a, I'm in a real great place right now. And, you know, comments like that don't anger me. They fuel me now. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a massive, a massive point in uh, my own life inside and outside my career, you know, that, that I've got to that stage. Because the more they write me off, the more that they say that I can't do it, the more I want to do it and the more that, I'm being fueled to get in there and do it come November 19th. And I genuinely and 110% deep down believe that I will come away a world champion. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of it also comes from ignorance rather than any kind of a knowledge either. Like it comes from not knowing fighters on the other side of the Atlantic and so on and so forth. So all, all these all these comments, I see a few, like obviously I, I don't read through them or anything, but... No. I think I seen one comment, or actually someone messaged me. Uh, I don't really go in much to my requested messages, but I did there over the last while because I was getting a lot of them. And, you know, I went into one of my requested messages and was like, uh, there's levels in this fight. Um, Andrade's going to get you out, out of there inside the distance. And I, I couldn't make out what the name was. It was a pile of numbers, and his profile picture was a chicken. And I just, I just started laughing. Like, I was like, are you serious? Like, yeah. You know, like, that's that's the way that it is. No, you know, I get uh, I get more of a laugh and an enjoyment out of these things. And as it says, look, they feel me more now than anything. 
yeah and as i was going to say about kind of like the the sometimes it's the the coming over even though you've fought so much in america still the uh you know the sense of coming over from ireland and so on and so forth we had a, a guy who will be in your corner on the night and they'll be training you from there who people didn't think was going to win a, a world middleweight title as well and possibly in america anyway wrote off before he uh he did the job so that's definitely something that's not like andy as your trainer it's like it's it's going to be like the specific game plan and 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 him as your actual uh coach is one thing but having also that experience of his own for you know this the same ring the same type of fight the same experience that's invaluable as well isn't it like um you can't like you can't buy that or you can't go out there and and put that together like what's what i'm going out there to achieve on november 19th andy has went and done it and that man is with me over two years now we have been day in day out working together um you know training every single day working since this fight has been in talks we've been working on the game plans we've been working on strategies and you know we have it down to a t of exactly what we want to do when we get in inside that ropes and to have a man that has been there done it and knows how to achieve these accomplishments and these goals that I've set out for myself, like it's it's something else, you know what I mean? And the way that me and Andy click in jail as well is just that's another just topping on it. Like, you know what I mean? It, it's it's a real great partnership that we have and a, a real great friendship that we have uh working together now and everything's been going great, training's been going great so far um we're we're right up to we're right up to scratch on everything that we want to be and uh it's about now just keeping it all focused locked in and uh getting ready to put on a hell of a performance come fight night absolutely we can't wait for it lastly it's in uh it's in new hampshire you said it was like you and we were probably talking about new england given the kind of the they want the irish crowd there we um uh, he's from Providence, I think, you know, so there's always going to be a kind of a New England element to it. What Have you been tasked with anything now to, to, to get the Irish in New York and Boston and even over here G'd up to sort of travel up for the fight November 19th? Just, what, what's the role in that? Just so everyone knows, it's Manchester, New Hampshire, not Manchester. England. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a load of ones saying... Jeez, that's unbelievable. You're fighting in Manchester. I'll just, it's such a short flight and all. I was like... It's a shorter flight than LA or Vegas, but it's still on the East Coast. Like, so just make sure Manchester, New uh, New Hampshire, but the like it has been it has been pretty hectic over the last couple of uh, days since the announcement. I'm trying to get back to as many people as I can, but the support has been unbelievable. The amount of people that have booked flights already, um, the amount of people that have been asking me about the tickets, and you know, I just. And that's just the people that's getting in touch with me. Imagine the people that's going doing it without telling me. Um, mm -hmm. I've got uh, loads of ones from Yonkers over in uh, New York and everything as well, saying that you know they're getting bus loads up to uh, up to the fight. And it's going to be unbelievable. And I think it's a it's at a time as well that everything's opened again. People are just mad to get out and support something Irish, whether it's irish dancing or boxing or whatever it may be like people are just mad to get out and support uh now again it's great and, and i'm very grateful and, and appreciative to to be in that opportunity to to put on a, to put on a show like this and uh, to get people excited to get people uh, you know booking flights and booking tickets and having something to look forward to this year and um yeah it's uh it's definitely it's definitely special and to be honest you know i just I can't wait for the atmosphere and uh, in the yeah. arena come Friday because I know it's going to be something special. It's going to be unbelievable. I think that I think the TV station will be shocked when they see the the Irish takeover and then the boxing <laughs> world shocked when you take the world title home as well. So let's look forward to it. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do loads more uh, with Jason up between now and and fight now. We've got lot, we've got a few kind of uh, uh, fun things planned uh, with your with your training camp and everything like that. So uh, watch this space for that. But before I leave you go here, there is a pretty big fight. Look, we, the last time we spoke, we were talking about uh, Joshua and Usyk. I texted you actually straight after the fight because 
everything you said in that interview pointed to you thinking Usyk was going to win the fight, but then you ultimately picked Joshua. Um, yeah. But you had it called, and the heavyweight division is just so interesting now at the moment because, like, as much as people will love to write off AJ now and all, there's still there's a bite left in him too. And then these two having their the, to finish off their trilogy this weekend, Fury and Joshua or Fury and um, Wilder. It is like it's as exciting a time in heavyweight as we've had in a long time. It definitely is exciting times, you know, because I think people are very disappointed. You know, a lot of people were rooting for Usyk, you know, in that fight as well. But a lot of people were disappointed after the outcome because they realized that Fury and Joshua just might not happen as soon as everyone thought it would. And that was a massive fight to happen. But, like, Usyk just pulled off the performance that exactly that he had to do. Um, he showed his skills, he showed his ability, he showed size didn't matter. And, you know, he got in there and put in one hell of a performance and, and wrote off the odds and came away the on the undisputed was it is it the undisputed champion now that he is unified, I think. I think, yeah 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 fury unified, still has one of the belts fury yeah. still has one of the belts as well so um yeah it's, it's really exciting times because it has really opened up the heavyweight division now to a lot of other lads outside of joshua and fury as well because mm. now there's a lot more fighters there in the heavyweight division that they can step in and earn their right at that top tier of the top two, top four in the heavyweight division. So it's exciting times. It really, really is. And yeah, uh, yeah I'm looking forward now to seeing where Usyk, where Joshua goes next. And then, of course, the, the big one then, Fury and Wilder this weekend. It's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting also. Yeah, I wonder how you think that's going to go. Because Fury is uh, he's heavy enough favourite. He's actually odds on on Adbrook's 10 to 11 to finish the fight inside the distance. Um, to, buy, to win by uh, KO or TKO, um, which is interesting to me. He obviously did la He did that last time. I was listening to an interview with him yesterday, and he's talking about Joshua, and he's he's trolling him a little bit, and he's talking about a short camp. But you know, at the same time, he's he is saying, "Look, I don't need a big long camp because I'm I'm training all the time. When I'm fit, I'm fit." And it's been a few years since he isn't, so maybe he's right on that. But I'm just. There's always a concern with Fury. Always, always, always that he's taking his eye off the ball. And it's because of history. It's not even anything he's done recently. But I can't help worry about it. Yeah, like Tyson's the type of guy that um, every time you see him in a build-up to a fight, something different's happening. You know, he's, uh, he's a character. Like, he really is a character. He plays up to the game so well. And I think... That is all part of his mind games, you know, mm. coming in with different attitudes, you know, making people think and especially Wilder think, well, he's taking his eye off the ball here a little mm. bit or, you know, he, he's not as switched on as he was for the last fight. He's beat me already. He just thinks he's going to walk in here and do it again. I think there's going to be two aspects of this because, you know, how much did that defeat hurt Wilder? If that defeat really hurt him and really upset him deep down inside and it's something maybe that he that he's struggling to live with, I think you're going to see a more improved Deontay Wilder. Not because of his new trainer, Malik Scott, or anything like that there. He's got a new trainer in now, but I don't think that that's going to make a massive difference. I just think it's going to be the attitude and the mindset of Wilder to see how much that defeat affected him. If it did affect him massively, you will see a much better Deontay Wilder, a more hungrier fighter. If it didn't, and, you know, he's just getting back in there, and, you know, I heard him talking about retirement already, which is a shocking sign to see mm. coming up to such a big fight. Um, that was a red flag for me when I seen him, you know, it's coming to the end for retirement. Is it in the back of his head? And if, if it's there in his head, that's not a good thing because... Fury is going to bring out all the demons in him again once he gets into that ring. He's going to bring up all those doubts that he had about himself already and that he's thinking about going into this fight. So it's going to depend on the mindsets. I think Fury is spot on. I think he's, you know, just playing up to the game, doing the, the usual Tyson Fury antics. But uh, don't don't be bluffed by it because once he gets into the yeah. ring, he's going to be in business. 
So if you were to if you were to guess, you would say that though there might be a sting in Wilder's tail, you're worried that it's actually him that could have his eye slightly off the ball, if anything, by just being a little bit probably too hurt, I suppose, or it is belief and his desire hurt by what happened the last time. Yeah, because, you know, Deontay's always had that career where he's left men sleeping. You know, he has a lot of entourage around him and, you know, they're all just like, you're the man, bomb squad, all this kind of stuff. Like, it's it, it just that kind of aura going on around him. And I think that's what maybe helped him get to where he got to in his career. But yeah. I think now that that aura has broken, um, not only in him, but in his team around him. And I think that, you know, I think Fury is going, my prediction for this fight, you know, I think Fury is going to perform even better and do a better job in this fight than he did in the last one. And I think a 10-11 uh, one inside the distance for Fury mm. is 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 unbelievable price for him. And I think that Fury is going to get this fight done inside the distance, without a doubt. Right. Would you have a, a round or a group of rounds? I don't know, seven or eight is coming into my head here, but yeah. I don't know, is that because, was it the seventh or eighth round? It was, I think it was the seventh yeah. last time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll go eighth this time, he'll probably, Fury saying that he wants to punish him a little bit more in this fight, <laughs> so I'm going to go, he's going to bring him into the eighth round this time and get him out of there. Okay, round eight for Tyson Fury win is 14 to 1 on Ladbrokes. If you want to go with a big with a group, Tyson Fury, uh round seven to nine is nine to two. And as Jason mentioned there, him to win inside the distance is ten to eleven. So looking like all Fury this time. No, I don't I, you're, I don't feel like you're uh hedge of the bets is the wrong word, but I don't think you're going against your belief uh this time. I think you had a feeling for Usyk. I don't think you've a feeling for Wilder, uh Tyson Fury all the way this week. Yeah, see, like I've been great in my predictions so far, and it's always because I've just went with my gut instinct. And with my gut instinct was Usyk against Joshua. But I think that it's probably like the whole propaganda of media and everything like that that yeah. swayed me. Like, like it was just like you can't really bet against Joshua. No. Um, and that's that that's that's the way that I was. You know, every all the all my mates, everyone was saying, oh, "Who do you think? Who do you think?" I was like. I know I said Joshua, but I really do think deep down that Usyk's going to. Do. <laughs> you could tell. I spoke to you about it for twenty minutes. You could tell what you what what what, the, what at least your subconscious was thinking anyway. You know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There you go. There you go. I don't think I said no. No doubt this time, Tyson Fury inside the distance is uh, Jason's prediction. Um, if you're having a bet on the fight or anything else, of course, in the world of sport, please do gamble responsibly. Visit the for more information. Jason, thanks so much for giving us your time. It's been a busy week, I know, and you've got a lot of training to do because it's uh just just over a month now, a month a month and twelve days before you take the world title home to Tony Golf. Exactly. Love it, love it. We'll 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 talk to uh we'll talk to Jason plenty between um now and the fight as i said keep an eye out we're going to do some fun things um uh before the fight uh happens on november 19th look if you're going over uh if you if you fancy an old trip it's been a hard couple of years uh there might be tickets uh they just keep an eye jason says they're out tonight so why not keep an eye out and see if you can probably make it over uh to manchester new hampshire not england uh on november 19th what a night it's going to be what what a build up we're going to have in the meantime, of course, on the build up our show, we'll be back with you tomorrow because uh, Republic of Ireland are playing Azerbaijan at the weekend and we're going to talk to Kevin Doyle. So we will talk to you then.